have a problem with putting carrots.
must believe that He is. Now, I believe many of you children tonight have a problem believing that God is. No. Believe God is? Yeah. Yeah. But you got half of it conquered right there. See, there's, there's a bunch of folks out in the world that don't believe that He is. That's true. Yeah. But by your faith, you've already took the first that you believe that He is. Yeah. He said, and not only believe that He exists, but they also believe that He is a reward. A reward is someone that will give you something for something good that you've done. And what is the good thing that the message is in this Scripture is to have faith in God. Yeah. Amen. And when you have faith in God, you please Him. When you put your trust in God, you please Him. And if you please Him, He will reward you. And I say reward, you may think of all kinds of different things, but all the reward that you're thinking of right now is something good from God. And whether that might be the answer to your prayer or healing or the gift, baptism, whatever that it might be, that's a reward. There's something good that you're looking for seeking the Lord. But he said that he's not just a rewarder, but a rewarder of them that do what? Diligently, Diligently seek him. Yeah. Amen. Well, what does it mean to diligently seek the Lord? Now, I know this is going to be a little bit slower this evening. We, if the Lord will move on these preachers, we'll turn them loose on you here a little bit. And I hope, God, no matter I hope they preach you after this evening. But I've got just a little bit I feel like to share with us tonight. Diligently. It means with carefulness. To see God with care. And what does that mean? If you care about something, you consider the quality of it, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. If you care about something, you tend to it, don't you? Yeah. If you care about your home, you will keep tending to it. Right. You'll keep it repaired. You, you do little things that need to be done because you care about it. Right. If you care about something, you check on it. That's right. Praise the Lord. If you care about something, you treasure it. That's right. But the writer said that, that God will reward, in my words now, the man or the woman that will seek Him with care. You reckon, now listen to me. There, there are different, all different people in here this evening, and there are different levels of faith, and different portions, different measurements. Right in here. Right. And there's some that have uh, different levels of understanding. And uh, some have maybe what we would say more faith than others. Maybe others feel like. They don't have as much faith as somebody else. In different levels. There's some that can pray for hours. There's some that do well to get an hour. And I'll give you that it is not so much about quantity as it is quality. Amen. Yeah. Lord. Bear with me just a little bit with you. They sang that song and they, they said, I'm waiting down here at the river. Will you come, Lord Jesus? And then they begin saying that they'll say, that old devil, he don't want me to cross. He don't want me to make it. And the son's father said that he tries so hard to make me doubt you. 
Doubt that you're going to come rescue me. Doubt that you're going to move for me. Doubt that you will help me. But then he went on and the songwriter said, but I'm so glad that I know too much about you. Right. In other words, to believe that you won't help me. Faith. Are we being diligent in seeking the Lord? Now you cannot measure yourself by yourselves among yourselves. Bible said if you're not wise in so doing. There are too many trying to be somebody else. There are too many trying to mimic somebody else. Walk like somebody else physically. Talk like somebody else. Act like somebody else. God don't want you to be somebody else. God wants you to be you. He made you, seasoned you with the flavor that you are. Right. And He loves you for who you are. Right. Amen. He don't want you to change who you are at your core. Right. There might be things about you that He'll work on. There might be habits. There might be ways. There might be something in your life that God will work on. He don't want you to have that. But God does not want you to be somebody else. Right. Amen. But He wants you to seek Him diligently. But too many have religion. they got religion. That's all they've got. Religion won't deliver you. Salvation is deliverance. Amen. And salvation comes through faith. Amen. Your salvation, your deliverance. I know the Lord delivered us when He called us with, with conviction in our heart, called us down to the altar to repent wherever that was at. Praise the Lord. Come on, brother. But there are other things you face and some are facing right now that you need deliverance. Yeah. You need salvation from something. Yeah. And the only way to get that is to seek God diligently. You elders that are here, mothers in the Lord that are here, if the young would listen to you, you could tell them about great battles that you have faced along the way. Uh, that at the time you did not know, now listen to me, you did not know how God would move. You didn't know when He would move. You just knew that you needed God to move for you. Now some of you did like a lot do nowadays. When trouble come, you didn't pray as much as you knew to. Come on, they folks let the devil drive them away from prayer. They begin to go in their own mind, in their own heart, and try to seek out an answer. You can't find the answer you need in your heart and your mind. Amen. That's the truth. But the same ones you learned along the way that finally you learned, I have got. To get a hold of the Lord. I've got to pray and I've got to pray much. Fifteen minutes wouldn't do it for you. Forty-five minutes wouldn't do it for you. You had to pray until you felt the Spirit of the Lord. That is when you are seeking Him. You don't go through just a, a, a routine prayer and a quality of prayer. And maybe just go through the motion of a prayer. When you're seeking God, you are running after Him with care. You are carefully searching, trying to find Him, trying to touch Him. And you know that you touch Him when you feel the Spirit touch you. You know when your prayer changes over from a dry and a carnal prayer into a spiritual prayer for the Spirit begins to move upon you. He said that God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. How many times have you ever been in trouble? You let up on your prayer. What happened? You got worse. Did the trouble go away? Got greater. Yeah. They didn't know that it fooled around so long and not prayed. They left the house of God. Yeah. They left the ways of God. Yeah. 
Because they fail to diligently seek for God. That's right. yeah. I have a will in the things in my life. You have a will in the things in your life. But the problem we run into is my will and your will are not always God's will. Right. A lot of times, they're not God's will. That's right. But how do I know what the will of God is if I don't seek Him? And it means much to seek God diligently. When you're seeking God diligently, it consumes your free time. You don't have free time. Your time begins to be dedicated unto God. You don't have time for silly things. You don't have time uh, for, for uh, trips here and trips there. You're trying to get a hold of God. Right. Right. Praise the Lord. Right. God can move in any prayer in this building. He can heal any sickness under this roof this evening. He can save anybody or He can come by and He can knock on their heart and give them the opportunity. But we don't get those things sitting around wishing that the Lord would come by. If you want something from God, go and seek God diligently. Don't look as the devil will look to let us look to the left or the right. Look on our neighbor. Look over, look in the, around the church house and, and, and show us this thing or that thing or the other. But when you really begin to get your heart set toward God, you stop looking around at all the things around you and you set your eyes on Jesus Christ. You stop looking at the wind and the waves. You set your heart and the mindset that I've got to get a hold of the Lord. And nothing else will satisfy you. Hello? You believe the Lord will reward a man or woman that will seek Him yeah. diligently? Yeah. Diligently is not an hour a day for the Lord and 23 for us. Praise the Lord. Come on. It don't have to be winter time for folks to seek the Lord because there ain't nowhere else to go and nothing to do. Uh, every day ought to be the Lord's day. Right. That's true. And there's sometimes that there's things you have to work, there's things that go you have to do. But in your what we call spare time, you find yourself curious about the Lord. Have I prayed enough? I'm not asking you to see any if you prayed. Have you prayed enough? Do you feel like you prayed enough to touch him? Have you touched him? This week. Well, you want to raise your hand, you want to jump up there and say, I did. Have you you examined yourself? Have I touched the Lord? Me in the in my altar, in my prayer life, have I touched the Lord this week? Have I touched him? Let's be fair, have I touched him today? Have I felt his spirit? You young people listen to me. The most important thing in your life right now is you learn about the Spirit of the Lord. Yeah. You cannot learn about Him. I always stuck your nose in some kind of device. You can't learn about the Lord like that. That's the truth. Those things will keep your mind carnal. That's the truth. And a carnal mind is enmity against yeah. God. It's a state, enmity is a state of open rebellion like against the Lord. the Lord. It's rebellious under yeah. God. Why? Because a carnal mind seeks out the things of the flesh. That's the truth. But the Amen. spiritual mind, it desires those things of God. Amen. Yeah. It's true. Praise the Lord. Have we sought Him diligently? You listen to me. It don't mean that, that God is always going to give you what you want. But if He doesn't give you what you want, He gives you something better. It might be the opposite of what you're praying for, but when it's done, it's better, the outcome is better than what it would have been if you had it your way. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to talk from my own experience. Are we seeking God? <laughs> I'm going to we'll set diligently to the side for just a moment. Are we seeking God? Yeah. Are you seeking God? Have you put in the time in your altar? Mm -hmm. 
When I wanted the Lord to move in something, I needed Him to do something. I not only prayed like I had prayed, but I prayed more and more often and longer time. And I didn't eat all day long. Day in, day out, just grazing my cattle. I wanted the Lord to do something. When I needed to know something from Him. I'm not talking about Facebook. I'm not talking about whatever other message or snap or anything else. When I wanted God to teach me something, I separated myself unto the Lord. Do you know what sanctified means? It means separated. <clears throat> Sanctification is separated for the use of God. Why does the church world not want sanctification anymore? That means that you set it aside yourself for the use of God. Right. But when I wanted to hear something from the Lord, now I could go around this, this, this building this evening and I could ask you all about a subject and, and maybe come up with a variation or a different opinion on that subject with everyone talk to. They might be some agreeing, some think something else. But there's times that you can't be satisfied with what your brother or sister thinks about something. There are things that you have got to know that whether they're not, they are the will of God. You've got to know with the assurance of your heart that God is in what you're doing. And that you, what you're doing, is in God. You begin to separate yourself. You begin to put the time in to the Lord. If you're going to look at the book, you can look at this book. When I started in this they preached to me, pray, fast, read the Word. Start now. The foundation. And those three keys that if a person will be diligent in that, you won't follow. I didn't say you won't be tried. I didn't say the devil won't come to you. But you will be more steadfast. You won't be so easy to be shaken. You'll be something that the devil would have to contend more with. Praise the Lord. If I was to ask you tonight who all needs the Lord to do something for you, almost every hand in this building would go up. But if we really want something from God, you have to to go to God and get it. God bless the men of God. Thank God for those that, that pray it out and seek it out. The anointing of God moves upon them. Thank God for the men of God. Thank God for the brothers and the sisters. The anointing, they seek God and get the anointing of God moves upon them and they can they can prophesy thus saith the Lord. Thank God for that. We need that. We need more of that. There are times that you're going to be in a place you won't have a brother, a preacher standing here by you right. to help you. Yeah. There won't be a prophet. You'll, look, you'll be all alone. You'll have to be able to go and get a hold of God for yourself. Right. Yeah. Hey, little girls, little boys, can you say tonight, preacher, I know how to get a hold of God for myself? I tell the good news for you. Whatever you need from the Lord, He's good for you. But you have to seek Him for it. Praise the Lord. You ever hear the, the world would have a saying that uh, all things in moderation? I don't uphold all things in moderation. But there's some things that, that as long as you don't go overboard with it, not necessarily wrong or sinful to do. But you can make a sin out of anything. Yeah, amen. Amen. 
Let it come between you and seeking God diligently. Yeah. And if that thing that was harmless suddenly becomes an impasse, yeah. you cannot go past it. That's right. Praise the Lord. It's all right? Yeah, it's the yeah. truth. It's the truth. You need something from the Lord. He's got it. You just have to seek it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And when you've sought the Lord and you've done what you know to do, it ain't so hard to praise the Lord. Right? It ain't hard to come out on Wednesday night and never let the work we No. Preacher, I'm tired. So am I. Say you are. Preacher, I'm tired. So am I. But if we can get the Holy Ghost to touch us while we're here, tired will leave. Sickness will leave. Weariness will leave. Weariness of mind, heart, soul, that will all leave out of here. Can God do it? God not only can He do it, He has done it. He'll do it again. You and I will touch Him. But we've got to get a mind about us that we have got to be more responsible with our time. That's good. Praise the Lord. Uh, it's true. I'm going to use an example now. Don't fall out me. I am not, what I'm going to say is not a sin. So don't go tell that this is, that this is a sin. Fishing. Not a sin. Not a sin. But if you let it get off of it, you find yourself somewhere on a bank somewhere or a boat somewhere and it's your church now. And then you do it again. It gets easier. Do it again. And if it's in that while, it's a habit. Yeah, true. That thing that is not sinful becomes a sin to you because you have let it take your desire from God unto itself. That's right. Praise the Lord. Truth, preacher. It is not a sin. As long as you don't deserve more ungodly, it's not a sin to take your family somewhere once a year. It's not a sin. Yeah. But if you're not praying, why did that feel that? Did you just feel like a really? Yeah. God made the ocean. He made the mountains. Come on. They're beautiful. Oh, you're scared of what I'm fixing to say? No, no come on. Come on. Come on. Well, you love more. <laughs> I didn't say you can't go do those things. No. As long as you conduct yourself right and you do right, right. right. there's no sin to be found in that. But if you find yourself going and going and going, yeah. and your prayer life goes, down low, you're not praying, you have left that. Come between you right, and the Lord. Right. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah, help us to make better use of our time. Yeah. I mean, like, help us, Lord, to be wise stewards. Right. Yeah. To take care of the things that God's entrusted to us. That's true. Amen. You know, Amen. I'm going to do what it is. It is something I fall out what I'm going to tell you, but it is. You brothers wanted to throw a baseball to your boy out in the backyard. You have not sinned when you did that. Right. But if you push him to join up and follow after that, right. and when do they usually do those things? Right. Church. Right. And the next thing you know, they're not there, and then you're not there. Right. And it pulls you away. That's true. What happens? That's true. You let that come between you and the Lord. Right, man. Yeah. 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 I know that. Yeah. And you're not seeking the Lord diligently. Right. I got you. Diligently. But come on, let's be honest with ourselves and for the Lord. Right. If there's anything we might as well just keep our heart open for God because He sees it anyway. Right. Yeah. 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 I hinder myself. Yeah, I do too. I hinder. Brothers, you've not done anything to me that would keep me from praying. Right. 
Sisters, you've not done anything to me that would keep me from seeing the Lord. Right. If I don't do that, I'm the one that didn't do that. Yeah, that's right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Why do you reckon it is that when you set your mind that you're going to do more, Along comes something out of the blue, we say. Yeah, it really don't come out of the blue. It might come out of the pit. But it comes along, and all of a sudden, this is more important than what you was going to do for the Lord. Right. Right. I want you to set yourself a goal this evening. I ain't talking about with me. I'm talking about with the Lord. You want, you want to be deeper with the Lord? Yeah. I'm not talking about making a vow or, or making a promise to God. Don't you make a vow? If you made one, you better keep it. Yeah. And I'm talking about setting yourself a goal in your life. You want closer to the Lord? That's your goal. Go seek Him diligently. You, you want to call Him from God? You'll have to go seek God diligently and pray for His will. That you're not trying to pray out something that ain't His will for you to have. Yeah, right. Amen. Amen. If you're in trouble tonight, you're in trouble, go seek God diligently. Amen. Brother mentioned about David going out and, and inquiring the Lord. In one place in particular, they had done come and sack the little city. They, they robbed them and carried off their, their little ones and their women took them off. And the men that he was with, they spoke of stoning David because of what happened. David had to encourage himself in the Lord his God. Do you think that the devil was not there pressing his mind when he began to go and inquire of the Lord whether or not he should pursue it? Yeah, sure. Do you think that it was just an easy thing? Because we read it in the book. If you don't get the spiritual mind, you won't understand the, the tension and the press that was on that man when he began to go and inquire of the Lord. But he knew to be a success, he had to go to God and get God to work with him. That was the proof. That's it. So he began to go and inquire of the Lord. You know what that means? He saw him diligently. Yeah, that's what it means. He began to seek the Lord to inquire the will of God. Brother mentioned tonight about making judgments or decisions so quick. If we'll inquire of the Lord, we won't do that. Right. If we get impatient, don't you look at me like I'm the only one that does that. Oh, right. We get impatient. We get tired of waiting on the Lord. Yeah. Well, we prayed and I prayed and I prayed. We'll just reach back our impatience if that makes you feel better. But if you really want something from God, you will seek Him diligently. And He will let you know, yay or nay. Yeah. I'm not talking about this that are coming and, and when you get done, maybe you, you get a prophecy somewhere and when it gets done, you don't know what the answer was. Right. Right. I'm talking about that anointing that got on Daniel. Yeah. That would dissolve the doubt out of the way. Right. That when, that when that got done moving on that man, there was no question as to what the will of God was. Right. You can get that to move in your life and you will know what to do. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. They mentioned it the other day that Sister Brent prayed. I think it was Larry talking about himself. But, you know, she went and she came back up and down the and had a Lord to talk. He said, you want to pray. I said, I've done that before. <coughs> then people would say, I need you to pray. Or so and in trouble. I need you to pray. And I go and I begin to pray. And, and it went, didn't take long. The Lord just let me know. He won't do no good to pray. This is God and them. Yeah. There might be somebody sitting here tonight that's been wanting people to pray. Pray. Pray for me. Pray. And it might be that it's God and you. want something from the Lord, you can have it. If you seek it out. And he says, I will. Right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord, let me be sure 
before I ever walk across the floor and speak I will to anybody. Let me be sure that it is God. Because with my love from my heart, I might get ahead of the Lord and say I will. But the Lord didn't say it. And then you or somebody leave out here saying, the Lord told me you're going to do it, but the Lord didn't say it. And then when it don't work, they say, well, the Lord said you're going to do it, you didn't do it. You got prophecy that it's going to happen and it didn't happen. It wasn't the Lord. Amen. You go ahead and say amen. It's just the way that it is. But to seek the Lord diligently. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He might come down to the place of praying and asking the Lord if you'd be all right before you go to Harlem. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, come on, preacher. Ain't nothing wrong with Harlem. I'd say it's something wrong with Harlem. It might be that the Lord wants you to go pray. Yeah. Do you believe that it's that way? Yeah, I do. I do. Come on, there's a whole lot of time. We step out on the permissive will of God yeah. instead of knowing the perfect will of God. Yeah. 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 I won't worry. Yeah, you brother, get ready. You're more than welcome. I love you. I love you. Go and ask the Lord. He'll tell you. Yep, He loves you. And I come and tell our people. You're a child of God. You're our people. You want help from the Lord? You have to seek your diligence. Careful. When I'm carefully seeking the Lord, I'm careful what I say. I'm careful where I go. I'm careful what I let these behold yeah. just listen to yeah. just to speak. Yeah. When I'm seeking the Lord, you know why? You can talk your victory away. Yeah. You can enjoy your lower listen to things and there goes your victory. Yeah. It's alright? Yeah. 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 <coughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. You good people, that my brothers, my sisters, you want the Holy Ghost, you want the baptism of the Holy Ghost, Seeking diligence. Yes. I didn't say seeking when I said seeking diligence. Yes. I love to be around somebody that's got that hunger for the baptism. Because yes. the Lord begins to do in, in, in services or outside in the life, the Lord begins to, to work strange ways with them. Why? Building their faith. Working with their experiences they begin to go through. Sometimes, children, that the journey, the experience of the journey yeah. is worth it. Yeah. When it comes to the Holy Ghost, the destination is definitely worth it. Yeah. You want it? You want it? Do you want Him? Yeah. You begin to seek diligently. Hmm? The Word even teaches us In other words, to pray that we might excel. Praise the Lord. When the last time you've been around somebody that wasn't just content to pray, but they was praying that they might be the best at what they can do according to their ability in the Lord. If we're not careful, we get caught up with a get by. Float along, slide along. I love the Lord tonight. I love you your way. Now I hope maybe to help somebody. Oh yeah. I hope to help you. Don't let the don't let the devil win. If you want something more, you go see it. You go and get it. Begin the purpose. Lord, I, I, I want this. I need you to move in this. Lord, I, I need to know about this. I need you to let me, give me understanding about this. And don't just pray it once a day. Once a week. But you find yourself going back. And going back. And going back. And going back again. And in the end, you'll find you say, well, you just say the same things you said before. It's coming from your heart. That little... One of the way one said, avenge me of my adversary. Avenge me of my adversary. Avenge me of my adversary. 
Now the judge got to the point that he just knew that one of them was going to be there when he went in. Yeah. Avenge me of my name. He knew what she was going to say. But she kept going. Until she finally she wore him down. You ain't going to wear the Lord out. No. Right. He might wear you down where you're humble enough to be a move for him. Praise the Lord. I love the Lord this evening. Let it be way you preachers come on and preach to us tonight. Feed the people. What you do, do it for the Lord. Children, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't quit. Keep going. Keep praying. Go some fasting with it. Read that word. Get that Bible out, bro. Get that Bible out and read it. Set you an hour to read it. You read the word of God. Oh, I'm happy. You don't ever do that. Yeah. Come on, preacher. Do your best. Right here. 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 Right
I have went so long without going and praying. Yeah, I'm here yeah. that long in the way. Right. Yeah. It tore down the table and I had to go back and I had to retire. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 We got to have some of these notions. Come on, brother. We can talk to the Lord as we walk through the day. We need to do that. Get our mind on the Lord. If there's a place that we need to have set aside that we can go still away. Get away from him. Everything that's going on. Well, nobody's going to bother me. And speak the Lord. Right. I believe that's why the Lord's sending down there. Get him away from everything that's yep. going on. Get him down away from everything that's going on. Come on, brother. There's people right tonight. I'm not going to bring you to nobody. I've got to do better myself. Try and do better. Need to build that altar thing. Good power. It's the key, brother. And we stop shaking God like he was there. Amen. You can go get down. You can do like they did in the Bible. Where is it, God? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Where is it, God? Where is it, God? He'll answer you. He'll answer you. He's got a history. Yes. You have to. Amen. He answered by far. He let the bar come down, burn up the sacrifice, and lift up all the water. Amen. That all refer. Right, brother. You feel no difference in places in the old Bible. They had an altar there. They had an altar. They had an altar. sacrifice. They come out to the altar. That's what they got to do. They had a Sacrifice time on that altar. Amen. Uh, I know we can have there a prayer here. I think I get down, time I get up, my knees is hurting. They go in there and they start hurting again. They go back down, that shouldn't be. They already used to it. They already used to it. If I see them in Africa, they used to it. I appreciate it. Come on, brother. Yeah,
Thank you.